Hey, and welcome to this Money Monday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. We're coming to you today not from the Newsmax headquarters in Midtown Manhattan, but the uh, Question Tequila Studios in Lower Manhattan. The uh, UN meetings are in town, and uh, of course, traffic is snarled in Midtown, so uh, we're testing out our new digs right here on 350 Broadway, right across from City Hall. And uh, right down the road here at the New York Stock Exchange, the Dow opens up a little bit to the upside today, just under 27,000, and uh, 27,000 is the support point we've been talking about for a while. Bitcoin jumped up a bit on uh, Friday, and now it's dipped back down just at 9,800s under the support. So as I've told you before, um, there could be a trap door here to 8,500, but uh, we'll be following that support line well. And uh, supporting me, as always, my co-host, managing editor of Newsmax TV, uh, Frank uh, Morano, joins us today on a special liquid lunch. Uh, that's right. I'm digging this new set. I like this uh, Scott Labedo original American flag behind us. It's that's a lot of right. fun. We're in, a, we're in a fun new place, Frankie, and we're in a crazy place in the world. That's for sure. That's for sure. And uh, we usually kick off the top of the show with news around the world, and we do uh, hear from Frank on his Frankly Speaking uh, but on Money Monday, we try to bring you the most money guests, and you've heard all about these allegations about the deep state. Frank and I have spoken about uh, Overstock.com and their, uh, their uh, cryptocurrency offerings and the great CEO, Dr. Patrick Byrne. And uh, with a lot of news going on around the investigation into the investigators, the guy who's right at the heart of it, Dr. Patrick Byrne, joins us on the phone today. Uh, Patrick Good morning in, in the East. Hey, John DeBacco. How are you, sir? Nice to hear your distinctive voice once again. Well, it's great to hear from you, too. I know uh, our audience, is, we, Frank and I have been keeping them up to speed on um, some of the allegations you came out with against the deep state. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about Overstock.com and the way there may be some retaliation from the regulators. And um, I thought, you know, our audience, very libertarian audience, um, they want, you know, less government, they want states' rights, and I know that's one of the things you've always been for. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's happening right now? Well, where do I begin? Where, where would you like me to begin? I, well, our audience uh, is up to you, speed that you, uh, that you had a, a relationship with the government for some time. Uh, dating back as an asset to a FBI murder investigation. Wait, 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 wait. Let's not all get. Uh, let's not all get it. I helped the guys twice, the men in black twice, and in my life. And a friend of mine got killed once, and I helped to bring the murderer to justice. And you know that that uh, back in the 05, 08 period, I got very. Uh, concerned about settlement failures in Wall Street, and I recognized them, thanks in part to some great education from you. Do you mind if I tell that story, Tobacco? Oh, no, this is your it? forum. I want, I want to give the real news on what's happening out there. <laughs> one, day, one day I walk into my office, and there's a... And there's, I, I, John always says that I had... Uh, that he had called me beforehand, and he worked out an appointment. I didn't remember that. There was a lot going on in my life in 05. And I walk into my office one day, and my assistant comes up to me and says, there's this real rough-looking, couple of real rough-looking fellows in there, and you're the office. And I actually went out to my car and got a weapon and stuck it in the back of my, my, of my waistband and walked in to see these guys, these two Italian guys in $10,000 Armani suits with... And, and I don't know who the hell they were, okay. but it was John Tobac. I did, it was John Tobacco, tough looking, and a friend of yours. I won't mention his name, <laughs> but it turns out they had come just to enlighten me, and I I've, I've been talking through my hat by that point for about six months to the world about, hey, there's this problem going on on Wall Street and the settlement system, and believe it or not. We think it works really simply this one way, but actually it works this other way, and there's a bunch of flop, and companies are being harmed, and most importantly, the whole system has a danger of melting down, and the whole world seemed to treat me like I was crazy, and John DeBacco showed up in my office and said, listen, I'm going to help you understand this stuff you're talking about, 
and John, 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 and his friend helped me out, and I learned more from them in 20 minutes than I had learned in six months with with a bunch of lawyers trying to teach me about it. So that's how I knew John, and uh, we've been friends since what, about '05. Was that John? That was about '05. So anyway, and I'm glad you didn't yeah. drag me into the next uh, the deep state action, but uh, you seem to always be at odds with the government, my friend. Yeah. So, so I'm not a government asset. I'm not a spy. I ain't nothing like that. I'm a liberal. I'm a flag waving hippie. I stay away from the government all I can all my life, but I helped them out twice in the past. Result of some weird things that happened, and I don't, I don't want to get in front of my headlights. And I've already got, you know, you know, I went on TV the day I quit. I quit the company because I felt a moral obligation to come forward and tell the country what's going on. I've, I've known for three years what's really going on behind the scenes. I was part for all four years. I was part of all of it. I got, and, and the truth will come out is, uh, enough um, in the future. I've, my, my rabbi in life told me I had an obligation to come to the public, and it didn't matter what anybody told me in Washington. And Dr. Bernard, so I just came to, to make clear to our audience who isn't following as closely, when you refer to your rabbi, you're talking about Warren Buffett, who you've known since you were a child. Yeah. And he's really been my spiritual mentor in life. And, you know, I'm, I made a lot of federal people unhappy, I know, by coming forward. And I broke a lifetime uh, a relation. Well, I broke a lot of relationships and a lot of friendships. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not too happy about the way uh, I feel. I feel like uh, if I ever had a friendship with with them, uh, I feel that friendship was uh, taken advantage of. But so they're probably pretty angry at me, and uh, I've got some harsh feelings myself. But I'm trying to do the right thing. And so I came forward, I followed Buffett's advice, I, I, we agreed that I had to get away from the company to do it. So I ejected from the company and came forward and told the truth. And the truth is, you got to say, and I know I'm, uh, I should make clear I'm not a Trump voter. I know that, John, you're, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, ne- a never Trumper, I'm not one of the Trump delusional, what do they call those guys, Trump, people who suffer from Trump delusion syndrome or something. I'm not one of those. I did not vote for him. I voted Libertarian. Uh, but I happen to have been on, because of some weird, I mean, historians are never going to get, I believe, how by this weird confluence of events, I ended up on the inside of, of both the Clinton investigation and the Russian investigation. I've said those on TV before, and so I'm not exceed. I'm not going to exceed anything I said on TV in the past. But I was on, and this whole thing, I can tell you, has been uh, well. It's four years ago that it really started, and it's all been political espionage. This is going to come out as the worst scandal in American history. Uh, I don't want to tell you who are ultimately the guilty parties, but that'll all be coming out. I think someday from the Department of Justice. But what's gone on is some people put our country through a ringer. This three years that we have gone through of where we're at each other's throats to the point that people are going around killing each other for no reason and and all this stuff is completely fabricated. The whole Russia Gate thing is a total fabrication. It was all engineered and this is not a theory of mine. I was on the inside. I saw the whole thing. The whole thing's fake. I did not really understand everything I'd been part of until last summer. I was, I mean, I, am, I, am I going on too long, tobacco? No, I, no, you're or giving or us or great background. I think Frank, my uh, co-host, had a couple questions he wanted to ask you, Doc. Well, uh, so, Dr. Byrne, uh, we could talk to you about this uh, all day, uh, but uh, I have uh, some questions with respect to when you say the Clinton investigation, you're talking about the investigation into Hillary's emails or another Clinton investigation. Well, there was another angle to the investigation, and there was that was not the only thing being investigated. 
and I was involved in the other part of the investigation. But that's all I'm going to say about that. Fair enough. Now, um, you've talked publicly before about your relationship with Maria Butina. It, no question in my mind that this is someone that got a raw deal uh, by the government basically for failing to fill out a form, and now she's in federal prison. Uh, what I'm not clear on is if you were working or cooperating with the federal government with respect to Maria Butina, how is that related to the Russia investigation with respect to President Trump, since the Trump-Russia investigation uh, was, was largely as a result of Mueller and the special counsel, and um, Butina was indicted independent of the special counsel through the standard Department of Justice channels? Yeah, there's reasons for that. That's a sophisticated question. The reasons, the whole thing, first of all, Maria Butina was railroaded. Uh, it's, it, she was railroaded. The whole thing is an embarrassment. The United States government knew about her the day she landed. They knew about every meeting she had. Uh, all of these, the, she knew about them before she had, they knew about them before she had them. And they knew about them from me. I was reporting. I was reporting because I've had a, or I had, and, uh, I lapsed some years ago anyway at a very low level, the lowest level possible security clearance. And that's just related to, I'm kind of an egghead, and I do some stuff on policy, and from time to time in my life, I've been involved with something on policy. And it means that I get to read certain papers, and I give my thoughts on certain matters, and it's just by, it's just being an egghead. So I have the same security clearance that a sergeant in the Army would have in, uh, in, in most fields. And... But as a result of that, you have, an, uh, we have, a, you have a duty. You actually sign a piece of paper that says when certain things happen, you have to report them. And in this case, everybody has seen this. They played on TV a bunch where Maria Boutina, Maria Boutina is innocent as hell, by the way. It's even, it's a shame she, they're even letting her sit in prison another few weeks. Uh, but I give them a lot of credit for that. And I, I can't take, uh, I give them a lot of credit that I, when I finally got to the Department of Justice and knocked on the right door and explained what was going on, within nine days, she was moved out of solitary confinement and to the nicest women's prison in the federal system. Now, I doubt what I say is nice is probably not what <laughs> you and I would really yeah, think. Exactly. But, you know, the, she was put there. This is what happened. She, uh, she's the only Russian they have in the whole Russia hoax. She's the only Russian they got. Right. So it was all engineered. It was all a setup. They needed one. Uh, hey, Doc, we they got, a, needed we got a, a we got a quick commercial break here. I want to talk to you about something a little more current about what's happening um, with your former company and uh, how the uh, deep state stuff may have actually played into some stuff that just happened at Overstock.com. We're going to take a uh, quick break, and we're going to come back with uh, Dr. Patrick Byrne, you're watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. Back in two minutes.